Joining us now is Ojinik Aupe, with stories trending around the world. Hello, Ojinik. Good morning, Good Dr. Martin. Good to see Martin. you in brighter spirits this morning. Yes, thank you. Good Very morning. Good, Good, Good morning, morning, Rufai. You both are marching today. You're looking great yourself. Oh, thank you. Well. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, former President Donald Trump sued the cable news network on Monday for defamation, claiming that the network had carried out a campaign of libel and slander against him and is seeking $475 million in punitive damages. Trump, in his lawsuit, also claimed that CNN had used its considerable influence as a leading news organization to defeat him politically. In Sweden, geneticist Savante Pehu on Monday won the 2022 Nobel Prize in physiology or medicine for discoveries that underpin how modern day people evolved from extinct ancestors at the dawn of human history. The 67-year-old scientist, who is the son of a Nobel Prize winning biochemist, was credited with transforming the study of human origins after developing ways to allow for the examination of DNA sequences from archaeological and paleontological remains. In Nigeria, members of the Adoration Ministry in Enugu State trooped out in their numbers in protest over the transfer of Reverend Father A.G.K. Mbaka, the controversial spiritual director of the ministry. Father Mbaka announced his transfer on Sunday, stating that the Bishop of Enugu Diocese, Kalista Sanaga, had appointed another Reverend Father to take charge of the ministry. <laughs> Under sports, Javier Roca, the home team coach at the football match in Java, Indonesia, where 125 people lost their lives during a stampede at a stadium on October 1st, said on Monday that the incident has left him mentally shattered after authorities confirmed that 32 children were killed in the disaster, the youngest being just three years old. Finally, under entertainment, Fast rising Afrobeat star Ahmed Ashake Ololade on Monday created a stir on social media after a video of him performing on stage with a goat surfaced online. In the now viral video, the 27 year old musician, who is currently on tour in the United States following the release of his widely acclaimed album, Mr. Money with the Vibe, was seen pulling the goat around the stage to cheers from the crowd. I don't know the symbolism of the goat, but I guess it's it's uh, the greatest of all time. But all time, I don't yeah. know. I just feel weird having an animal in my space. <laughs> with yeah, a musician. He's just pushing and, his... You know, he's doing really well. He just, just came to the scene uh, yeah. about two years ago, and he's done really, really well for himself. I mean, he's just pushing his, you know, artistic license. Yeah. Anything you call it, this guy is a great act. You know, very talented. You can't take it away from him. Yeah. Since he bust on the scene, a big shout out to Olamide because came up through the YBNL. You know, family, and he's done very well for himself. He's having his first tour. You know, songs like "Organizer" popping every time. You know, you know, pretty much reminds you of Jimi Hendrix when he used to set his guitar on fire. It's just that artist antique. Really, and Ashake is here to stay. He's you know, I'm an animal lover, so I always feel awkward about stuff like that. But you know, kudos <laughs> to him, and I, I like his song with Fireboy Bandana. It's my favorite. Well, let's begin what's trending with reactions trailing the rally tagged Lagos Women's Support Walk for Tinubu Shatima Sangwolu Hamzat organized a canvas support for the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and his running mate, Kashim Shatima, as well as for the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Songwolu, and his deputy, Obafemi Hamzat. The solidarity exercise saw a mammoth gathering of women from all walks of life, including Nollywood actresses Joke Silva and Foluka Daramola. 
The march comes on the heels of Jacques Silva's inclusion in the women's wing of Tinubu's presidential campaign council, which featured other Nollywood actresses. Nigerians on social media have shared mixed reactions over the veteran actress's support for the APC flag bearer. Let's take some tweets. This is from Messi, who wrote, If Nigeria was her company, will she give it to Tinubu to manage for one year? For the type of CV he submitted without credentials to back up his education, she lived her life and really didn't see the damage the Buhari administration did to us. Well, Daniel wrote, Jacques Silva supporting the APC shouldn't be a big deal. She's fighting for her self-interest and insulting her won't change anything. So put your time to good use by marketing credible candidates that can help fix Nigeria. Talking is one thing, but action speaks louder. Well, another tweet there goes, a few random thoughts on the ridiculous attacks Jokia Silva is receiving. One, most of what's happening now reminds me of what happened in 2015. People believed JEJ was the devil and Buhari our savior. And back then, if you supported JEJ then, you too were clearly a demon yourself. Our candidates are not divinely appointed. As supporters, we are not more patriotic or exceptional. If David can support Atiku, P Square can support Peter Obi, Jokia Silva can support Tinubu. There is no moral high ground here, just a scorched egg crusade that destroys society's fabric. Dr. Abati, over to you on your thoughts. Okay, I, I thought I addressed this uh, earlier on the program when I made the point that every individual has a right to make their choice. Yes. The people who are insulting Mrs. Uh, Jokia Silva, Mrs. Jokia Jacobs, as she's otherwise known, I think that they are missing the point. She has every right to make her own choice. And in fact, it's noteworthy that she herself went on Instagram to post the pictures of her support for the APC in Lagos. She even referred to the old girls of uh, Holy Child College, the secondary school that she attended, and showed herself with Mrs. Ibijoke Sonwulu, and even tagged the uh, post you know, are women working for support for the APC. Every person has a right to choose. You have just your PVC. Who you vote for is your business. The second part of it is about, you know, uh, um, the, um, the fact that people are saying, oh, because uh, she's choosing the APC, she has committed an offense. She has not committed an offense. Okay, she's a celebrity. Celebrities can endorse. Some people were asking for her husband's uh, whereabouts. That uh, why did she leave her husband at home? I what? think that's very insulting. Really? It's uh, sexist. Okay, nobody asked when uh, male uh, members of Nollywood support their candidates. Nobody asked for their wives. But it was you a know. woman. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, this was a women thing. Yeah. it doesn't even matter. So why drag her husband into it and say she should be at home with her husband? She had distinguished herself in her own right. And she's not the only female member of Nollywood who has made a choice in this uh, whole process. Fuluke Daramola, uh, whose name was also mentioned, she is uh, supporting the APC. Her husband, Kaede Salako, is one of the uh, supporters of the Labour Party. And she herself has come forward to say, no, her husband can make a choice. She too can make a choice. Nobody should say because you are a married woman, uh, you must make a choice or you must be approved uh, by your husband. And I hope that people will just lend themselves common sense. All the people losing, you know, uh, their hearts, uh, misbehaving, you know, on social media and abusing people, you do more damage to your candidate when you make enemies for them. Mm -hmm. You are not the uh, candidate. Your job should be to make friends for your candidate. But, you know, talking, uh, you know, uh, things that don't make sense, you know, sabotaging your candidate, uh, with your own shortcomings, I don't think that's the way to go. So I don't see any problem with me, women working, either for Ashwa Jutinumbu or working for, uh, you know, uh, Sonwulu in Lagos uh, and his uh, deputy, Amzad. This is political season. People will make their own choices. And we must respect the individual right to make a choice. Well said, Dr. Vati. Rufai, quick comment. It has to be said, everybody in life has a right to make their choice. And I think it is not about who supports who. What is a, this election is about, it's about the issues on ground. Mm. 
And people should remember that choices have consequences. That's what it's about. Yeah. I mean, and recently, please, Zach Oji also came under fire. I believe yeah. that story was like a month please, ago. I, I don't know you. why the Nollywood actors and actresses you. should not have a right to vote their choice, right? I beg you, do not attack anybody for making their choice. They have a right to their choice. This election is about the consequences of actions people make. And please be guided. Nigeria as it is today is suffering from consequence of actions made many years ago. This election is also about the systems. Because we should ask ourselves the critical question. Why is it we get excited about a candidate and afterwards Nigeria remains the same? It keeps getting deplorable. From 218 Naira to the dollar not being acceptable according to a certain campaign, to 745 Naira now. Please, let us think about the nation more and about the choices we make and the consequences and how we can better this nation. That's all that we should rally around. Not abusing people. Let's keep it clean and issue-based. All right. We'll take another story. Human rights advocate Femi Falano has reacted to comments made by the Minister of Labor and Productivity, Chris Ngige, who over the weekend warned the Academic Staff Union of Universities against the consequences of contempt of court. On September 21st, the industrial court ordered ASU to call off its ongoing nationwide strike, which the union embarked on on February 14th, to press home the demand for improved funding for universities, review of salaries for lecturers, among other issues. Falano, in a statement on Monday, said that ASU did not engage in contempt of court on the recent verdict because the union is seeking to appeal and stay the execution of the judgment. He further advised the federal government to stop chasing shadows and adopt urgent measures to end the strike. Well, in another development, a video of the Minister of Labor and Productivity, Chris Ngige, storming out of the meeting, spearheaded by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gbajia Biamila, to end the crisis between the union and the federal government, has surfaced online. In the video, the minister could be heard accusing the ASU president, Professor Emmanuel Osadege, of calling on Nigerians to vote out the All Progressives Congress in the 2023 general election before he stormed out of the meeting. Well, let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. Mr. Speaker, it's a jocular, but it's still serious. That what? That the ASU president said that APC government are kept children at home and that Nigerian people should vote out people who are not kept children at home. No, it isn't. What did he say? We want to tell lies to the public. You will have an opportunity. You, 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 you will have an opportunity to speak out. The amount of people said that you are telling lies to the public. No, girls. You are telling lies to the public. How about you? Tell me, go ahead. Dr. Bati, over to you. Okay, I think, you know, we discussed this yesterday, but there have been developments. Femi Falano, SAN, uh, coming forward to respond to the allegation by the federal government that ASU may be guilty of content of court. And what he has said simply is that, look, there's no content of court here because after the federal government, you know, filed a case uh, seeking an interlocutory injunction against uh, ASU. And Justice Polika Pan of the National Industrial Court ruled that the status quo should be maintained. ASU went to court. Femi Falano is the counsel to ASU. And today, incidentally, the case uh, will be heard, we are told. So what uh, Femi Falano SAN has said is that, look, uh, ASU appealed. ASU also filed a motion for a stay of execution. And if that is the case, then there's no contempt of court, as he has said, either in the face of the court or away from the face of the court. Because the judicial process is something that you are allowed to exhaust. You can go on appeal. And if you have gone on appeal and you have not slept on your rights, you are just saying that this matter should be taken further. And we're told that today, now that the Court of Appeal sitting in Abuja is going to hear the matter, what is ASU asking for? ASU is saying that the Court of uh, 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 Justice Harman arrived at his uh, judgment in Kuriam, in Kuriam in law means in error. And that what has been done is a miscarriage of uh, justice. They are even questioning uh, the jurisdiction of the court. They are saying that, look, the court under Section 17 
of the uh, of the uh, act, the trade dispute act, can only hear cases coming from the industrial arbitration panel, and that that is not what has happened in this particular case. So the process has not been exhausted, but the bigger point made by uh, Femi Falano or SAN and others is that there are substantive issues that would need to be addressed. And incidentally, today, the Bajabi Amila, Femi Bajabi Amila, Honorable Speaker of the House of Representatives, is leading a team of stakeholders to meet with the President today to take a second look at these issues. And we hope that that is what will happen, uh, that the matter will be resolved. And some people have quoted the President say, oh, the, president, the government doesn't have money. The uh, government cannot enter into any agreement that it cannot fund. But the president of Nigeria, the box stops at his desk. Mm -hmm. We hope that the meeting that will be held today by stakeholders with the president, led by Femi Bajabi Amila, will not resolve in the kind of uh, riotous, chaotic, uh, you know, conduct that we have seen in certain meetings where ASU and the government officials engage in uh, shouting matches mm -hmm. and leading to a situation where the Minister of Labor will stage a, a walkout. A walkout. That, that does not help anybody. Nice. And I think that, uh, you know, uh, Minister Ngige, you know, should just have adopted a more diplomatic stance. We don't expect that anybody will walk out today of any meeting, of course, with the president sitting there, mm -hmm. if uh, he takes on the meeting himself. I don't think anybody will have the courage to work out on the uh, commander-in-chief of the armed forces of uh, Nigeria. Yeah. Then what Nigerians want is a resolution mm -hmm. of the matter. Yeah. The students themselves, they want to go back to school. Mm -hmm. Parents want the schools to be reopened. The rest of us are worried about the future of our children so that they can go to school. Yeah, so that we don't have to be worrying about how to get foreign exchange mm -hmm. to pay school fees in, yeah. in other places where there's greater decency and common sense about the future of the younger generation. Now, Rufai, I did not understand the point the minister was making about you know, whether or not the APC, uh -huh. I mean, is the APC, should the APC come before the students? I mean, he should have conducted himself properly, as Dr. Abati have said. Well, meanwhile, the National Association of Nigerian Students has kicked against the national honor expected to be conferred on the Minister of Education, Adamu Adam, spokesperson for the Student Association, Giwa Temitokwa, in a statement on Monday, said that the move is a clear pointer to the fact that Nigerian students have been taken for a ride on October 11th. The minister is set to be honored with the commander of the Order of the Niger. Rufai. <laughs> you see, Oji, we are a big joke in this country. And I, I don't know when we're going to get it. After the first seven months of drama, season one finished in the ASU Federal Government debacle. Then season two started with the court. I remember the day they said they were going to court. I know it's another season of drama. Because if this court will do probably till February next year, and they, they will pass the problem on to the next administration. Then season three is the new installment, giving somebody uh, national honor. Anyway, the, those that gave national honor came out to say that the list is fake. So probably I want to believe that maybe it's part of the fake list. But if it's part of the real list, so it will be that you are giving education Mr. national honor for prevailing over I mean, what is that? as a strike. Oji, we are, we've become a key and popo in this country. You see, but the problem with us is that we fail to realize that the butt of the jokes are the ordinary Nigerians that have nothing to eat. And their only offense is being Nigerian. And they want to school in Nigeria. We've become a joke. Look, look at us. Look at us. You, you, you can see us. After seven months, we are fighting now. We, then the federal government decided to go to court after seven months. Then we are fighting in court back and forth. Now the national honor, you know, for someone that prevailed over strike for seven months. You know the robot will say, Achia Bokemena, clap for yourself. Pa, 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 pa. I love when you say this. May God help Nigeria. Yeah. May God help Nigeria. Well, thank you both for your great analysis as always. Well, that's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.